Okay, so we have Maria. She's been working with me one on one. Um, so Maria, how did you find Find Food Freedom, and what made you say I want to reach out and learn more? Yeah, so I I found Find Food Freedom. I think it somehow must have popped up on what I think on my Instagram. Okay, um, and for whatever reason, maybe I don't know if it was because I was searching recipes or food. I don't know, but I found it probably about a year and a half ago. Um, and really liked the videos, um, that were being posted. And so I started following you guys. Um, and, uh, you know, every, you know, I was started following while I was still in serious cycling of binging and restricting and okay. poor body image. And so I would see the videos and I, I remember thinking like, that's great. I don't need that though. I'm okay. You know? And I was like, yeah. no, I'm good. I got it. I've got a handle on this. Um, or you know, just, just those kinds of thoughts, but I still followed and I still looked and I like still like kept coming back and back. And then, um, you know, I would say the past six months I have had some transitions and, um, I moved to a new place and slowly started healing, I think in a way, like realizing that I was getting mad at myself for not going to a certain gym and working out all the time. And so was like, okay, and I'm going to accept that. I was ready to accept that. And then I told myself, like, I'm not ready to compete at this point. I was going to do a powerlifting meet. And I was like, I'm not ready to be judged by the scale. You know, I feel like that's not going to be helpful. And so I decided to not do that. And I told myself that I wouldn't track. Um, but then I started seeing myself still tracking in a sense because I knew so well what yeah. what the content was of this wrap or I had to have yogurt or a smoothie or whatever. And I would like do that for a couple weeks and it would go. And then it really changed for me when I found two healthcare providers that kind of opened my eyes. I was one, um, you know, I'm very transparent, but was one going to see my gynecologist and I was telling her that I wanted to switch to the non-hormonal IUD for many reasons. And, um, but she took time and asked me questions and helped me say out loud, this has been emotional, but that I was like, maybe I can't lose weight because of the little bit of hormone in my IUD. And she was able to say, like, I support you, whatever you want to do. But, you know, what else What else are you doing? Like, you know, what's your lifestyle like? And I was able to see, like, I'm not doing anything else. I'm not moving. I'm not worried. I'm not looking at what I'm eating. Um, and so she referred me to a PCP to help just in general establish care. And she also asked me really important questions. And with her, then I was able to, re you know, realize, like, well, like how I have an eating disorder yeah. and I've probably had an eating disorder for a long time. Um, and it was like, I tell Julie all the time, like the glass ceiling shattered, you know, and not in a way of like breaking a barrier, but in a way of becoming aware, you yeah. know? And so I knew I was like, okay, I have to do something. And I had been following Find Food Freedom for so long. And I was like, this is what I want to do. So yeah. it, it really was like, I would say like an 18 month journey of finding you guys and then going through this process of like, I need help. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to do it because yeah. this is okay. <laughs> so that's yeah. amazing. So how has your relationship with food changed throughout this process? Oh man. Um, so it's completely different now than it was even just three months ago. Um, I remember like, this very vivid memory of it was after I started working with Julie and I, um, you know, the, the beginning of the program, just talking about like, just what do you want? Just asking myself in the morning, what do I want? And I come downstairs and um, I was like, okay, what do I want for breakfast today? And I thought back, I was like, well, I had eggs yesterday. I don't really, I don't want to make eggs. I don't have time for eggs. I don't want to make a smoothie. That doesn't sound good. And we had bagels and I was like, I'm going to eat the bagel. And I felt so empowered saying, I'm going to eat a bagel. So I cut up my bagel, put it in the toaster and I go to the fridge to get cream cheese. And I realized that I'm out of cream cheese. And I had a moment of like, you can't have just a bagel and butter because at least the cream cheese has more, more yeah. protein in it than a bagel. You can't just have that. And I like stood there in the fridge and realized just how, abnormal and intrusive that thought was and then now that because I'd had this awareness of like what was going on this extreme um turmoil of have you had these thoughts all day every day for 10 years yeah. you know we're like something as trivial as 
having a bagel with butter or cream cheese is literally causing me internal distress. Yeah. yeah. And so I stood there and I was like, no, you, you are not going to throw this bagel out because you don't have butter. You don't want the bagel with peanut butter. Right. You're going to, you're, you're going to eat the bagel with butter. And I ate it and I was felt really proud of myself. And yeah. so that's how I can describe, that's how I, I describe how my relationship with food was. It was that complex that thought out that uh, I tied everything to it. Yeah. Um, and I realized how often those thoughts happened in my day. Like I used to think about what I was going to have for my next meal five hours before, even the next day. I think we calculated how many hours I must have spent planning. Yeah. And then I realized looking back now, it is not normal to be sitting at your job, calculating your macro content for the next day or, if I wanted to have chicken fingers at lunch, well, shit, now I can't have whatever I made for dinner. Yeah. Um, and so it's been a journey going from that to now I just eat what I want to eat, which doesn't, shouldn't sound that bizarre, but to <laughs> me, it still sounds so yeah. weird. Um, now I, I just eat it because I want to eat it. I enjoy it because I, I like it. it. If I want to make mashed potatoes every day, I can. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's, that's the thing, you know, going from that bagel example to now, like I just eat what I want to eat because I want to eat it and it still sounds foreign. Um, but that's how it's changed. It's crazy. I love that. Mm -hmm. What was your biggest takeaway or aha moment from our time working together? Oh man. Uh, I think that it didn't have to be like that I don't know um and I don't even know if that's like a the takeaway but um I'm trying to like do it like what I thought was peace wasn't peace it wasn't normal um I think I've like really learned that like my validation and my worth is not tied to my body at all. Um, and I think like, I've really taken away like just how complex this is, not just for myself, but everyone else. Mm-hmm. Um, and like that it starts so young. Um, like we were talking, I see that with my clients that I work with um, that, you know, like it is, it's so social and complex yeah Um, and it can it can start young and it can be lifelong um and I think just like it doesn't have to be this stressful and then I you know I think about myself and everyone else in my life that I think still experiences like turmoil and shame and distress and it's like you know there's so much going on that like the thought about what we eat every day should not be the forefront yeah yeah and, absolutely you know and obviously I'm still yeah thank still you still really that. hard yeah sharing that would you recommend find food freedom to a friend and why yep uh it works uh you know why I mean I think I'll just go back to that bagel example you know like it you know if you're okay with you know, your thoughts every day being, <laughs> do I need to throw out the bagel? I just toasted that I want because I don't have cream cheese. Yeah. Um, if you're okay, f- sure. But, uh, you know, that that's why, like, to take away that extra stress or uh, judgment of yourself, you know, yeah, that's why. And it, you know, it works. Um, I think letting people know though that it is hard and it does require like a level of like looking inside and not loving what you see inside or how you view yourself or realize like your own stigmas and biases that you have not towards yourself but towards others and be like and you'll you know it sucks (laughs) for a minute it sucks it's hard um you know but it's worth it I think making sure that you're there and you're ready to do it um, is important because it is, you know, it is a financial decision, um, but so worth it. You know, my partner and I talk about 
you know, financially I'm struggling right now and I'll have moments of maybe I shouldn't have done this yet or, you know, whichever. And he reminds me and then I'm able to remind myself like, holy cow, like your life, you are, your life has changed for the better. Yeah. Um, and so it's worth it. It, yeah. it works. It yeah. works. I, I really feel like I've healed myself inside and that, you know, my body, there's no way my body is that physically different now than it was three months ago. And arguably, I, you know, it just stats are stats. I'm weighing heavier than I was three months ago, but I, you know, I, I used to, every time I went to the bathroom at work, I've expressed to Julie, I used to think I was tucking my shirt in and I was looking at my stomach and wondering how I looked that day and obsessing over that. And I haven't done that in two months or, you know, so it, it works. Yeah. It, you know, it feels bizarre to say that I don't do that anymore because it's for me personally, it's only, it's been three months, but it, 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 it works and it's changed how I perceive myself and the world around me. So that's amazing. Thank you so much. Yeah.